So if I were to improve my suggestion, I would need to take off a tool. So that gives me plus one. Uh, what else do I have? I have the naval coat. So I can get plus one there. What else? What else can I do? I can get plus two. Uh, the suggestion. Dun, 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 dun. Else? No? No, okay. So I can get plus two by changing clothes around. I do actually have a lot of skill potential for this. Um, so I could probably focus on that, maybe. And then in terms of items and tools, so I can do plus one Psyche. So that gives me plus one as well. So I can get plus three. And that's speed, yeah. That's different speed. Uh, Reptide, just normal speed. So I can get plus three to plus four, maybe, depending on how it works. Uh, Herolidon as well, plus five. So I can actually get my suggestion up pretty high compared to what it is right now. And then there's obviously the, the, the funny thing of if you try and go on a date, suggest a date, uh, that might be... They might lead to funny conclusion. The planks creak beneath your weight. Morial. The ladder leads to a school of fish swimming in to the kelp. So I guess this doesn't count as the canal. The canal has to be the water lock, mate. So we're not going to go into the the house just yet. There's still the vagrants, homeless people there. I'm going to see if I can try and find this trap. Where would this trap be? Aha, there it is. The last one. It takes you a moment, but finally, you spot the last of Morel's traps. This one's partially obscured by the reeds. Look around. The reeds bend forlornly toward the water. Some tufts have been crushed. The broken stalks sickly pale against the darkness. In the east, the city center hums to you. The constant, distant song. Louder on this part of the coast. Nearer somehow. And there's that cold again. Always the cold. Reach for the trap. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. Look closer. No locus. No locus. No phasmid either, but still. Immediately yell, it's empty. Look closer still. Well, debate worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. Well, that's the point. It's a cryptid. It's changing your perception so it doesn't get to be seen. The written is a little untidy, messier than the others. Like someone or something picked up the trap and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. I do get the feeling that someone or something may have messed with the trap. What if it was the Phasmid? What if it ate them and got out? It probably wasn't the Phasmid, but still Morel needs to know. You're right, but I still need to tell the cryptozoologist about this. You're right, this crypto research has been stupid. I do get the feeling someone may have messed with the trap. Perhaps our cryptozoologist have competition in the form of an actual entomologist. Or someone else is sabotaging them. I could present more theories, but then I would be taking this on as a case, which I'm not. Ah, but I am. Uh, what if it was the Phasmid? Right. Anyway, that's for the cryptozoologists to figure out now. We are not cryptozoologists. We are cops. Yeah, well. Whatever. Uh, I didn't want to pick that dialogue option as like a definitive answer, but... I guess I didn't really think about it too much, so. Um, so yeah, so it's one o'clock, but there are still people around to talk to. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the vagrants, and then I think what I'll do is I'll check the Whirling and Rags to see if Morel or Lena are around. They probably won't be, but I feel like it's a good idea to kind of check everything before going to sleep because obviously a new day is a, a whole new thing. So, hello. Down call. Down corner. 
The drunk man speaks in his sleep. Drool dribbles from the left side of his mouth and down his jacket lapel. There's wake up. no waking him from his stupor. His mind is elsewhere. Sure. And then... The legend returns. You know the deal, legend man. Smokes are smoky. Pilsner gets you drunk. You've already cleaned me out of spirits. And speed. He looks sad. So, I don't need more smokes, and I don't need more Pilsner, so I'm off. And then... Tequila Sunset. Uh, sorry for being a buzzkill earlier. I'll supply the booze if you supply the stories. Now, I believe we were told last time that doing the booze will kind of get rid of all of the uses. So you kind of want to hold off on doing uh, this just yet. So let's check what kind of booze I actually have. So it's a pool. So Commodore Red, three uses. Uh, the Grazi's Brew. There's only one use left of that, actually. Uh, speed. Potent Pilsner is 12 uses. Astra Smoke's four. And Speed, 14. So what I'll do is I will make a save, and I'll try seeing what giving the Grassi's brew is like. Because if there's only one use left, then giving them the rest of it uh, is, is obviously a good use of it. But then I also don't know if I can get any more of the alcoholic brew, because it's a specific mixture. It's the one that's being used to spike the Union's um, alcohol. Oh, the, the stew, rather. So, we'll see. Alright. All right, so Tequila let's do this. Wonderful. So potent pilsner, Commodore Red, special strike brew the Union uses, the blue medicinal spirit. I don't have any on me. I don't want to have. I don't want to give you any of my alcohol. I might have more use for it. Let's try the special strike brew. Interesting. Ah, this is what they use to keep the working man going. Hey, Spiral Boy, are you gonna share that? One of the other bums interjects. No, there's only one use left. <laughs> Gurgles the near comatose man. Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George. But around here, you already know. I was once a reasonably high net worth individual. A founder slash junior partner at a high-concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. Go on. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I called a cultural incubator. Abstract value generation, value per person, high-concept stuff. I developed the paradigm, worked within the paradigm, but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me. So I went jogging every so often to keep myself sane. Wait, how many people did you have working for you? 22 full-time employees. An all-star team. A potentially historical set of individuals. Worrying about them often kept me up well into the morning hours. Did the jogging help? It did. With my trusty Sansarik tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. But now dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit. He says thoughtfully, brushing dust off his shit-stained pants. One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. He shakes the bottle and makes a ringing sound. His eyes are clouded. His dilated blood vessels encircle in his irises like stinging brambles. His eyes are your eyes. So I removed the key ring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets to stop the jangling, you see? At least, that was the plan. Yeah, that wasn't gonna work. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality situation became very wet, very quickly. How wet are we talking exactly? It was a day not unlike this one here. You both glanced skyward. 
It's dark. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. Uh, the key ring, keys for the front gate and the apartment. Okay. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Ouch! I would have landed on my feet. I've got feline reflexes. Say nothing. I feel like Tequila Sunset would try and impress them, so... I've got feline reflexes. No, you don't. <laughs> Thanks, Savoir Faire. Whatever. The point is, reality was looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower. But when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard. Standing in front of my apartment door, fumbling with my pockets, I realized that I'd also forgotten my apartment key. Okay. How do you forget the two keys you need to get in? You've got to be shitting me. Or what happened next? You've got to be shitting I me. I wish I were, Tequila. I wish I were. Instead of my apartment key, I'd taken the key to the office. Okay, so what happened next? I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see? One moment someone chats you up, five minutes later you've bought a box of edible lingerie and a strap-on. I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be... One of the best. He pauses meaningfully. Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. Yeah, that's, you know, common sense. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day. And since I hired only the best, he'd already done it. And I couldn't get in. Is any of this true? Anyway... Long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company... well, you see where I'm going with this. This seems very unbelievable. So, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? He takes a long swig of his drink. Wait, is that it? I feel like there are some steps missing. I'm almost homeless myself, doesn't seem so bad. Look on the bright side, you've got one hell of a story. You do realize all of this was your own fault. That this black point in the world, a hole, it's already claimed an entire commercial area. Maybe you're another one of its victims. I literally can't believe it. Is that it? Tequila, I've thought about this series of events for a long time. If there was anything else to it, I would have thought of it by now. Why didn't you go to the authorities? Yeah. Well, at one point they came to me, but, you know, I, I didn't have any ID on me. So they tossed me in jail for two days. Yeah, I can see that happening. I can't say it increased my faith in the RCM. No offense, gentlemen. Alright, well, being homeless is terrible, so that's not it. This is There is no bright side to this. You became homeless and lost everything. You do realize this is all your own fault. It's kind of putting the blame on him. It's victim blaming, but... I don't know, it seems a bit harsh. Uh, maybe you're a victim of the doomed commercial area or similar. Uh, is there actually a doomed commercial area? I don't know. See, again, we're, we're going into sort of the meta commentary of the world we live in, which is there are some things that are unexplained and very much uh this wouldn't be real in my universe but in this universe things like the two millimeter hole in the world the pale in between the isolas it could actually be a thing that there is a doomed commercial area i don't know i literally can't believe it i mean again that's kind of just dismissive so i'm gonna go with this one the black point in the world this would explain a lot I always believed it wasn't my fault that I ended up homeless on the beach with these two bums. 
Hmm. Maybe I should have said it is your own fault. He looks at his partners with a glint of sadness. God bless them, though. I'd be alone without them. Anyway, that was all the story one bottle gets you. Almost empty, this one. Oh, yeah. I suppose it was only one use. Why do you keep losing all your stuff? Good fucking question, Tequila. If I knew the answer, you think I'd be hanging out on a beach in this formerly premium but now extremely dirty two-piece Lycra tracksuit? I used to own my reality situation. My business buddies and I had our own creative services agency. I had a nice apartment, an even nicer piece of ass. But somehow it all got away from me. Oh yeah, somehow. Now I can't hang on to anything. Just last week I stole this nice new jacket, but then I lost it too. The only things I haven't lost are these two drunks. You stole a jacket last week. Was the filthy jacket in its place for a week? A lost jacket? Sounds like a mystery you could look into. Hmm. What was the name of your agency? My agency, ma'am. The Boom Boom Room. Our concept was combining high art with the lowest forms of marketing. The color red, breasts, and oil painting. I convinced my partners to reinvest some of our profits in an even more high concept cultural incubator called Thin Air. The artists were happy, the clients were happy. I was financing a group of poets in East Rebishaw who were developing a new universal poetic language. But then it all went to shit. He looks towards the bay. Sounds intriguing. What say you, Art Cop? If it sounds like it makes no sense, that's because it doesn't. Mixing oil painting and breasts to make ads isn't high art, it's just cynical wankery. That's so high concept I have no idea what it means. Man, mixing high and low, commodifying culture, that is extremely my shit. Right, okay, never mind that I asked. Mixing oil painting and breasts isn't high art, it's just cynical wankery. I like the phrase cynical wankery, so I'm gonna say this. Well, you know, sex sells. That's the first rule of advertising. That is true. It may be, but it's still tired. Yeah, actually, you're right. Let the market sort it out. No need for me to regulate this stuff. Mm. Yeah, you're right. That's what's so cool about advertising. It's kind of like art, except you can also get fucking rich doing it. What's up with the tracksuit? What? You've never seen 100% Lycra before? Go on, feel that primo material. The man extends his arm. You really should touch it. Why? I'll just admire it from afar, thanks. Touch it. I'm gonna touch it. Pretty nice, huh? This might be one of the last of its kind. Should probably be in a museum, honestly. He takes another sip. Good God. It's nearly impossible to describe how dirty this texture is. It's like rubbing two jellyfish skins together. You feel about 15% less human for having touched it. Alright, I suppose Half White was trying to warn me. But, you know, you know, we're having high concept conversation, so I can probably heal this back. Oh, interfacing failure. Right, that's what the issue was. Randomized trials have also found Lycra TM to be associated with a number of exotic, highly malignant cancers. So you also have that to look forward to. There is no way just touching the Lycra has made me get cancer. And then there's the smell. But you don't even want to think about that. Wow, you're lucky. He never lets me feel it. That's because your paws are fucking filthy, Rosie. We're right next to the bay. You could wash them any time. What about the other drugs? My fellow members of the Union of Moribund Alcoholics? They're exactly what they look like. Hey, Tequila! You wanna buy some speed? I've already got some things. Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. He's a cop, remember? I thought he was a cool cop. I am a cool the cop. The gurgling sound comes from the direction of the non-responsive man. 
And yeah, you're already acquainted with abs. So yeah, that's basically us. We drink together. What's this about a lost jacket? Tequila, it's a verifiable tragedy. It was practically brand new. Sure, it didn't really go with my Lycra threads, but it did itch a lot less. Say, you're a detective, right? Maybe you can help old Doom spiral out. Solve the case of the missing jacket. What do you say, Tequila? So, I guess I already have done this. You mean this jacket that I discovered on the boardwalk and had cleaned on a whim? Hmm. The man examines the jacket for a moment, a look of consternation on his brow. Nah, this isn't it. Palm, that's medium concept stuff. Totally not my style. So you're saying there's another lost jacket out there somewhere? Come on, man, this is your jacket, you just don't remember. You're saying there's another one out there? It's a big world out there, Tequila. A lot of lost jackets in it. Don't know why you'd think this could possibly be mine. Hey, Doom Spiral. Ain't that the jacket you stole the other week? So it is. Not on your fucking life, Rosemary. What's wrong with you people? Like I'd be caught dead wearing Falm, like some low-concept bicycle courier. Tell you what, Tequila. Why don't you just hang on to that one? I'll get another jacket. Someday. Secret task complete. Find idiot Doom Spiral's jacket. At least you get a nice jacket for your troubles. The Lieutenant Shrugs. I want to hear the story of your name again. What's in a name? He looks up to the sky as if pondering the question and turns back hey, to you. Spiral boy, are you going to share that? One of the other bums interjects. <laughs> Gurgles the near comatose Shut man. Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George. But around here, you already know. So is he just going to repeat the story? I was once a reasonably high net worth individual. Uh, I've heard so enough. So you don't want to just hear the same story again. Okay. He looks taken aback. Okay. Uh, uh, have you got any more stories? I do. But as you can see, my fuel tank is running quite low. If you catch my drift. He spins the bottle in his hand, not a single drop of liquid remains. I mean, I do quite like listening to these stories, but I need to figure out how much alcohol I am actually going to give as part of this. Uh, G's already gave you some, I don't want to keep doing that. Don't do it now. Then I can't keep on telling the stories. Sure. Alright, be seeing you. Okay, let's step aside for a second. I have something I want to talk about. Yes? I've been meaning to have a little chat with you about your sense of style. My style? What about it? It's just, well, you look more like a high-flying businessman than a police officer. I'm wearing the patrol cloak. That's right. You're an entrepreneur of the peace, here to disrupt legacy law enforcement with buzzwords and privatization schemes. Well, yeah, you never know when you're going to need to pitch a business proposal. I just thought this was how professional people were supposed to dress. That's not quite what I was going for. I mean, I thought that was just what pe people who are being professional do. There's nothing wrong with it, per se. It's just a little much. A much what? You know the expression, the clothes make the man? The right outfit in the right situation can make all the difference in the world. Okay, you're a sharp-dressed man. We could be style buddies. I'm not taking style tips from someone who dresses like a mega binoclad. I'm not taking style tips from someone who dresses like a washed-up tip-top racer. I mean, we could be style buddies. No, there's no reason. Kim's got a good style, I'll, I'll admit it. Like, I'm just kind of slapping stuff together because, obviously, I don't have a full set of clothes. But if Kim has some ideas, then yeah, we could be style buddies. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, detective. Aw, oh, come on, Kim. Anyway, we should probably get back to the case. Let's go. All right. Uh... So, I think that's probably a good place to call the stream for today, so I'm going to go ahead and make a save, and we'll go ahead and wrap up. So, thanks for watching the stream guys, I know it's been a long time since the last one, but I, I hope you enjoyed us as we go through Disco Elysium even more. We actually did a lot more than I thought we were going to get through, uh, still in that single day. So next time when I play Disco Elysium, 
it will be hopefully to kind of see whether Morel and Lena have met up. And yeah, we'll start a brand new day. So we can talk to Evra, Joyce, you know, all the other people around in the area again. Um, so yeah, so as a reminder, this will go up onto YouTube at some point. So you can find that over at youtube.com slash regrowpimsyplay. Again, there is still a massive backlog of Disco Elysium stuff to go ahead and do that. Uh, so yeah, people might be watching this a lot later than it actually uh, was streamed. Um, but yeah, you know, that's the benefit of scheduling stuff, isn't it? We've also got Discord, Twitter, TikTok, etc. etc. Obviously, if you want to catch us when we do these things live, uh, the best way to do that is to watch us at twitch.tv slash riggyrob. We try to stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at around about 8 p.m. UK time. Again, that's not been as common recently. Um, but that's kind of the time frame that we go live for. So around 8 o'clock UK time or after 8 o'clock UK time is when we kind of try and do it. Um, so yeah, so thanks for watching the stream, guys, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>